How's it going everyone? So in today's video, I just want to recap on a few things. So first and foremost, I haven't done much on the car lately. I've got it to the same state that you guys saw before, but just been doing stuff, life and whatnot. I haven't really done much to the car itself. So right now the Viper's on the road. Finally, we got that all done. The S2000, it could technically drive, but we still have a few more things, which I want to get into on this video. And also, I'm going to ask you guys now, and by the end of the video, I guys want you to give me a comment in the comments below on what we should do with the vehicle. So I'm trying to decide whether we should wrap it or paint it. I know I showed you guys before that I got the stuff to paint it, but I'm wondering if we just go ahead and wrap it. It'll be a challenge. I really don't know how to wrap. I'll be completely honest with you guys. I know it's you know just a sticker essentially, but wrapping around some of the corners and curves that's gonna be the challenge. So anyways, give us some thought throughout this video and be sure to drop a comment in the comments below on whether you think we should paint it or wrap it. Cause I think we're gonna to have to do one or the other. I could technically drive it like this, but it's a little bit ugly. And I wanna just go over a few things, show you guys what we need to do to kind of get this thing going and what the next step is. So we do have some final touch up stuff, which I will be doing shortly, but haven't done yet. Of course we have you know, this dent that we popped out or, or break in the bumper. So I still have to tend to that, get this all ready to go because I still have this ridge here that I'm going to have to Bondo. But with Bondo aside, I still have some stuff that I don't need to straighten before we get to the, you know, fine tune stuff. This front bumper, we're still going to have to sand to get this ready. But before we do that, and what I want to try to tackle in today's video is this. So we still have this issue with the hood where when this tear occurred, when it pushed it up, it seems to have bent the hood out of whack a little bit. Like it's, if you guys follow along here, see how it goes up and then comes back down. So I could technically try to bend it on the car and just push this down, but I don't want to because we have good hood hinges on here and I'm afraid if I push on this too hard with it connected to the hood hinges, it might bend the actual hinge. So what I'm gonna do is take this off. We're gonna lay it out on the floor over there. I'm gonna support it with wood and I'm gonna push right here and see if we can't push that and get that to bend down because there's actually a, you could see it before when we didn't have the fender on, but underneath there's a rubber pad and it's not making contact with it. You can see that the hood is engaged, it's latched in, but over here it's still sitting high. So, I mean, you guys would probably agree with me that it's really small details, but since we have the, the time and, and the ability, let's try to fix it and make it as good as possible. We might end up putting carbon fiber hood on it later, but Let's work with what we got for now and try to make this as good as possible. But like I was saying, there's a rubber pad under here and it's not touching it. Like, hopefully you guys can hear this. So that thud is when it actually makes contact with that rubber. That's where it's supposed to be. It's actually supposed to be sitting down like that. And I know that's a little bit low there, but if we can at least get this part to sit down a little bit more, we should be in business. If we can achieve that, then we'll, we'll mud this with some Bondo, get it ready to go. And we can continue our kind of bodywork stuff here. These aren't fully bolted on, but I am gonna have to bolt these on. We'll mess with the hood today. I know I'm jumping all over, but I got a few things. Before I can actually go and get the inspection done, because even though this is super ugly, it's technically pretty well road worthy at this point. Um, what I do have to do is replace the rear pads because they are just chewed down to the nothing. So uh, I do wanna put some performance pads and, and whatnot on here at some point, but I might honestly just put some AutoZone ones on there. And um, I'm kind of curious how the AutoZone ones are going to work because AutoZone pads have lifetime warranty, if you guys don't know. It's the most ridiculous thing ever. If they wear out, you go back to AutoZone, they'll give you new ones. So if we're going to be going to the track and stuff, if I just put AutoZone pads on there, we could technically just throw those on there. And when they wear out, you get new ones for free. So I don't know why they do it. It makes no sense that there's lifetime warranty on pads. It's a wear item, but hey, that's their policy, not mine. So we might put some AutoZone pads on here. And uh, at least it'll get us through our inspection and we'll see how they work, whether they're grippy enough for, for our track events that we want to do with this thing and go from there. But let's pop this hood off. Like I said, it's not going to be that hard. We will pull the hood. It's just four bolts, which I still have loosely attached. If I can get my hand in here. Yeah, so it's just the four bolts there on the bottom. But like I said, I have new hinges on it and I don't want to bend them. That's that pad right here. That I was mentioning that's not making contact on the hood with. So what we're gonna do is take it off, we'll put it on the floor, support it with wood, and then we'll try to push down there and see what happens. So let me get this uh, set up and we'll continue. 
So we have the hood set up on the floor and this is gonna be super basic. Um, yeah, there really isn't a whole lot of you know, complex to this. I've got some wood under the front and this is part of the problem you can see is even with it sitting flat on the floor, it doesn't wanna sit flat on the front. So see this, even the front's kind of twisted. So I have the wood across here to support it. It's obviously gonna be supported by the floor on those two corners and I'm gonna push right about here down to see if we can bend that arc back and I'm hoping by the end of this that this won't be sitting like this. That hopefully it'll be sitting flat on the wood because there's no reason why this thing shouldn't be sitting flat on the ground right now but it's just kind of twisted and tweaked. So let's go ahead and push over here and see what happens. We really can't mess it up any more than it is but we'll find out in a minute. So I really have no idea whether that worked or not. And it's pretty awkward because when you put pressure there, you almost need to hold on the other side. So I did a combination of kind of putting my knees on there cause I don't want to damage or dent it on that side necessarily, but I would put my knees there and put my hands over here to stop it from flipping up. But I don't know if that did anything. I'm just gonna throw it on here loose. I'm not gonna put the hinges on, but we'll flip the hinge down. We'll set it on, click it in and see if we've made any progress or if we have to kind of go crazy on this thing and put more weight on it. It still seems like it's a little bit up in the front on this corner. It still has that kind of height to it, but let's see where we're at. We'll just throw it on quickly. I'll flip this down. We'll toss it on and see where we're at just for fun and see what happened. All right, so this is actually hilarious. It is pretty much fixed. It could use a tiny bit more, but look at it now, you guys. I'm not playing games. I literally just did what you guys saw, and it's already much better already. This is a little bit down, but we have to fill that a little bit, so that's okay, but check out over here. I don't even know if we should mess with it anymore. Honestly, it's not bad now. Like, that line isn't sticking above. You guys saw the gap. It had, like, a good quarter of an inch away there before, and now it doesn't, so... Just doing that seemed to fix it. I might do it just a tiny bit more just to get it perfect, but I mean, honestly, it's not bad at all now. I'm laughing right now that that actually worked, but let me put it back on the ground. I'll use my little method over here. I did put a couple more blocks on this side just to kind of hold this because I don't want to push and bend this part down anymore. So where that wood is there, it was supporting that corner of the hood while I pushed on this section here. So. I'm gonna do it a tiny bit more. I don't know if it'll get much better and I don't wanna wreck it because it seems like that somewhat worked, but we could get a tiny bit more out of it just to make it absolutely perfect. But honestly, it's pretty good right now. So right where you see these black marks, we'll push a little bit more, see where we're at, put it back on. Okay, so it is as good as it could possibly get. I mean, check out those body lines now. So, <laughs> I'm just laughing at myself because I honestly didn't think this would work, but yeah, it, it worked out great and uh, seems like we're okay now. So, we can go ahead and fill this and um, yeah, continue. I was worried about this hood before, but now, like you guys can see, I'm not playing any games. This looks to be as about as good as it can possibly get. We'll probably have to play with the alignment a little bit, but. I mean, at least it's sitting down now. It's not sitting up like it was before. So that is that, you guys. So we're gonna apply some Bondo. I sanded this out a little bit more. I gotta clean it out with a bit of air. And we'll use some wax and grease remover. I also, since we're gonna mix up a batch of Bondo, I'm gonna finally fix this dent. So I sanded this a little bit more too, same thing. Put off. Then we'll use the wax and grease remover that we have over here somewhere. Oh yeah, it's on the floor over there. And then we'll mix up some Bondo. There we go with the wax and grease remover, or tar remover they're calling in this case. We'll take this, wipe this down so that our Bondo has the best chance of sticking. And this was ground down or sanded down with 80 grit, so it should be more than enough. So 
there's that. We'll walk over to our other one here. Same thing. Just clean it off, just so everything can stick nicely. That's about it. I don't know if this one was high or low. I think this one should be okay because that one was high, so we don't need to add anything there. Probably just put some primer on it. There's a few other dents that are on the hood, but I might have to drive this thing around just to get some of the certifications and stuff done for it. So I don't want to make it any uglier than it already is with a bunch of pimples all over the hood. So we'll just stick with this one for now. We'll bondo that over there. So let's go ahead and mix up some of our bondo. You guys have seen it on the last few videos, but I'm not going to use the bondo hair in this instance because there's tons of strength there. So really we don't have to add any strength with some of the fiberglass. So we'll just use the regular bondo. Should be more than enough. We'll mix it with batch and continue. So we waited till the next day, and not that you have to, but it's definitely hardened up now. Uh, two things about that. It's probably gonna be harder to sand now, so maybe you don't wanna leave it that much, but we had some other things to do, so ended up uh, doing that and letting this kind of cure up. So we're gonna sand this today. So this is where we're at. Again, there's gonna be a little bit of a low spot here. So we're gonna have to sand it, and then we'll probably have to use a bit more fill. And like I was mentioning over here, this side should be good to sand it and not have to add anymore, but we're definitely gonna have to sand this down. So let's go ahead and get to sanding. So you'll notice that I switched over to this longer sanding block. I had the shorter one. And the reason why I use, want to use the longer one is so that you can follow the shape of the hood or whatever panel you're working on and not start dipping into the different crevices. So you guys will probably see this here. This circle is that low spot that I was telling you about. And you can also tell by when you sand across, this is being sanded, this is being sanded, but this is not. So that means that there's a little dip there. So again, we switched over to the longer block so that we can try to get this shaped as well as possible. I have this the small block just to kind of hit some of these high spots, but now we'll switch over to the longer one and keep sanding. So here's where we're at. Like I said, we're gonna have to add some there. This ended up being a pretty, um, like a high spot on the actual hood. So you can see that it was trying to sand this when I was using my block. So that's what that means if you guys are wondering what the heck I'm doing. It's you take the block, you go across where you didn't end up sanding, which was this area and this area, That those are the low spots. If you see it breaking through different layers on the paint, those are the high spots. So this of course was one, we went right through the clear, right through the yellow, right through the primer and down to the actual metal. So that was a high spot there. And here and here were the high spots as well. So we're gonna put another just coat of Bondo in here to fill this up and then we'll sand it. I'm hoping we'll be able to get in one more coat, but we still have to sand over here. So let's go ahead and sand that first before we mix up another batch. So here's another classic case of the block doesn't lie. So you're gonna see that this ended up getting sanded down before these two spots. And you guys saw before, all this was full of Bondo. And the original damage was here. This kind of got pushed in or down and this part here was low. So I just kind of put the whole, put Bondo on the whole area. Assuming that this was a dent when we sanded it all down because originally the paint was missing here. So I sanded this area regardless because there was kind of some rusted areas from being outside in the elements for the several months that it was at auction or whatnot. So after sanding with the block, you can see that this ended up getting sanded right down. When you run your hand over it, you can actually feel that this is a little bit high. So whatever impact was generated here, it bulged this area. So when you sand it with the block, the Bondo actually got filled in here and here to try to make up for this high spot. So I might end up trying to tap this down just slightly and we still have to do that other coat of Bondo here. So I might mess with the hammer here and just see if I can tap this down. Really, you won't be able to see it, honestly. It's so minute. I might just leave it rather than creating more work. 
because it's really, you're not gonna be able to tell honestly. So I might honestly just <laughs> leave it because we got a bunch of other stuff to take care of. So let's make up some Bondo and uh, we'll fill over here. Don't forget to use your wax and grease remover. You blew off the dust, but also want to wipe it off again. We did the same on both before we head over here and start mixing our Bondo. Here's what we have now. So before it fully hardens, it's already hardened to attack and you can't move uh, or make a nail mark in it so much. But you can actually shape it easier before it gets fully hard like you guys saw earlier. So we're gonna go ahead and start shaping it. That's what that one looks like. And over here, this is what we're left with over here. And I just knocked this tiny little corner off it because it was pretty high. But uh, yeah, we'll start just kind of shaping this. It's still kind of tacky, but I just want to get the general shape and then we'll let it harden a little bit more first. I'm pretty happy with this now. I ended up just lightly tapping it with a hammer in this these areas before we put the last coat of Bondo. Probably should have showed you guys that, but I did end up doing it. Uh, nothing too crazy, just some light taps with the hammer around this area where it was high. Then we filled it back in, sanded it, and now it feels pretty good. So we have this body line across here. You can see that the back, so don't pay too much attention to this part down here behind where the clip is gonna be, but it's this body line that we're concerned with because there is a piece of trim that goes across. I tried pulling this out to try to bring this out when I had the slide hammer, but it doesn't really matter because the clip just goes in there, but that's kind of the damage that happens. So. Again, this trim piece goes here, but it's this line that we had to correct where you're actually gonna be, it's gonna be visible. Whereas back here, it doesn't matter so much. So we're done sanding there for now. Let's move on to that part over there. And hopefully this will be our last coat of Mondo and we can go ahead and put primer on. So here we are, this is all sanded and feels pretty good. I think that's the best we're gonna get it for now. Our line is all straight here. Underneath, we've got it all smooth and corrected. And up here, it's pretty decent. And I'm still learning as much as you guys are with me. It's been a while since I've done body work, but I understand the basic principles, but definitely we're gonna get better as we go. But, and I'm sure if you're an absolute expert at this, you probably wouldn't have to bondo it twice or three times or however many times we might be doing it. But um, yeah, we're learning. This should be good. So what I'm gonna do is I got some scotch tape. We're gonna tape off some of these areas and just blast them with some primer and we can move on. But I'm gonna tape this one up also. So same thing here. This one ended up being pretty smooth, but I did have to hit this down with the hammer before we put that second coat of bondo down. Just give it a few light taps. And now I'll tape it off, we'll hit it with some primer and we should be done for this video. So we're all taped off. Doesn't have to be perfect, but we're gonna have to end up sanding the rest of the car depending on what we do, but we're using our wax and grease remover here so that our paint all sticks. And that's about it. We'll wipe it all down thoroughly both sides here in the door and then we'll continue. So here we are, we have this primer now, so we're gonna let that dry. Same with over here. I did hit this one spot on the hood here that we had sanded previously. It was just a spot that was high from whatever ended up occurring with this hood latch. There was one kind of pimple here that we had to kind of hit down and, and level off. So. 
that's that part. And then here we have under here now primered and up here primered. And we're gonna have to sand all this to get rid of some of the sanding marks and the bondo marks that we have. You can kind of see the outline of the bondo there. So we'll let this all dry, but we'll tackle that on the next video. All right, you guys, so that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Check out the other videos that we already have on the channel because there's a lot covered already on this car and we're gonna to continue to do so. But I gotta go get some ice cream. You guys can probably hear it in the background. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. We'll see you on the next video. Take care.